galaxy. Still bound to our galaxy, you know, it really does kind of belong to the gravitational pull of the Milky Way. From here, we're going to go over and down. So I uh, will zoom in just a little bit so we can get a slightly better view. We're coming across to M26. Here's another uh, open cluster. So this collection of stars that formed together. From there, we'll go up to the wild duck cluster M11, another open star cluster. But you can see this is a really, really dense one. So that looks quite similar to a globular cluster. You can see it's called a salt and pepper cluster or a July salt and pepper cluster. So uh, in the same kind of grouping as the January salt and pepper cluster, the Cassiopeia salt and pepper cluster. Uh, from there, <clears throat> We're going to be going over uh, almost to right above the east, past this bright star Altair, to the Angelfish Cluster, another globular cluster of stars, M71. Nice, rich, dense field of stars that you can see. It does get a little bit denser towards the middle, but not as clearly as some other globular clusters. And this is another great thing about the Messier Marathon. By going through all of these different things, you get to see some of the great variation we see. Here's another planetary nebula, and you can see this one, uh, the Dumbbell Nebula or the Apple Core Nebula. I really do think it looks like an apple core here. The way that the material falls off a smaller star as it decomposes, it is influenced by the spin of the star and the magnetic field of the star. So that means you also end up with this kind of polar shape with these two clear different poles or sides, thanks to the fact that stars, of course, do have poles and they rotate and they have their own magnetic field. So that can influence how these nebulas fall apart. So just as there's different types of stars, we can get these different shapes of nebula after they fall away. There's the Cooling Tower Cluster, which you might remember from our last video. That was about far north and as far low as we went. It's in a very different position now because we're after moving so far late into the night. From here, yeah, we're going to come right down to the Pegasus Cluster. Uh, all the way down here to M15, a nice dense globular clusters of stars, very prototypical of a globular cluster. From there, we're coming right down almost to the horizon and a little over just the other side of the east to M2, another globular cluster. Now, this is all about two o'clock in the morning. You can see this one's pretty faint. Part of that's due to the atmosphere, due to extinction. So we can see as we get a little bit later and M2 gets a little bit higher into the sky, gets a little bit clearer and a little bit e easier to see. You have to wait a while. That, that was about an hour. We're through to half, uh, half three now. We had to wait that long for M2 to come that bit higher into the sky. But that's very useful because it gives time for these other objects to rise. So from here, from M2, we are zipping across to, uh, you know, back under this collection here, back under the Butterfly Cluster and the Sagittarius Star Cloud. In fact, we'll go just a little bit later, so that Ptolemy's Cluster over there is nice and risen. But if we zoom in a bit closer, we'll start to see that there are some other clusters around this part of the sky. So we'll go just a little bit higher. Here we go with M54, another globular cluster. Uh, this one, again, is being extincted by the atmosphere because it's so low in the sky. And that's a problem we'll see for these lower ones, like M70. Again, it's a little bit fuzzy, but you can see that one's really dense and quite small. It's got only a few stars out around the edges. And then from M60 or M70, we can go up to M69, another globular cluster. You can see that, that one, even with the extinction of the atmosphere, you get the idea that that's kind of an orangish, reddish group, uh, globular cluster of stars. <coughs> From there, we'll continue on and take a quick look at Ptolemy's cluster M7. So M7, very close to M6. This is an open star cluster. You can see there's a lot of space between the stars, very different from the M70, M69, and M54 we just saw. Now from here, staying about the same height, we're going to come back across. So we are very low in the sky here to take a look at the Spectre cluster M55. And this is a globular cluster. So again, way, way denser. Coming from M7 to M55, I really get to see the difference between an open and a globular cluster. Now from here, uh, we may need to wait for things to get a little bit later because we're moving back over towards the east, over towards um, a few in the range of 70s. So we may need to move a little bit forward again to get the moon out of the way. We're coming back over uh, towards the east, southeast here. So here we go. There's M75, which is another globular cluster. Yeah, appeared to be on track. There's M75. And from M75, we're going to move over to just above Jupiter and Saturn. So we're here now at half four in the morning. Uh, we're after getting a little bit later in the day. Yeah, there we go. That's definitely Saturn. And we're looking just above Saturn for M73 and M72. So a globular cluster and an open star cluster right next to each other in the sky. 
So you can see just a few stars with some nebulosity quite close together. And then when we take a look at the globular cluster, we've got a very dense collection of stars much closer together. Quite a few more stars and quite a bit further away from us. So those are all visible in and around the east. From here, we're going to have to turn uh, almost the whole way around back towards the northeast to the Triangulum Galaxy. So again, from our last video, we started with the Andromeda Galaxy and it was very close to the horizon over in the northwest. Now that we moved all the way through to morning time, it's after coming around up into the northeast and coming up underneath it is the Triangulum Galaxy, uh, pretty much the second closest galaxy to the Milky Way. And it's a beautiful one. Now, if we get rid of the atmosphere, which will get rid of any sunrise glow and extinction, now you can see it's got this really beautiful shape. It's quite a fuzzy galaxy. It's got a lot of arms clearly visible here, uh, quite loosely arranged. That's the Triangulum Galaxy. Uh, the Triangulum Galaxy, the Andromeda Galaxy, the Milky Way, the three of us are very close together, then surrounded by some other more distant galaxies. So the Triangulum Galaxy M33, a great one to take a look at. Now, from here, uh, these are all nice and visible. But if we take a look back over towards Jupiter and Saturn, there's a cluster, the Jellyfish Cluster, that's underneath Jupiter and Saturn at the moment. But waiting for it to rise basically means waiting for the sun to rise. If we start taking a look in here, there it is. But this is going to be almost impossible to see with a telescope at this time of the year. It's another... Uh, Globular cluster of stars, it's out there just under Jupiter and Saturn. That's one that you may have to wait for another time of the year to correctly observe. And because these Messier objects, you know, they were spotted all throughout the year by Charles Messier in France, some of them are only going to be visible at certain times of the year. So from here, uh, we're really going to cheat by getting rid of the atmosphere entirely. So here goes the atmosphere. And here come our last couple of things. So down next to Sirius, uh, I'll need to go a little bit later into the day to get Sirius into the sky, uh, just because of the angle. Uh, it's more the tilt of the Earth from here in the north. We didn't get to see the little beehive cluster, M41, in the last video. It's another open star cluster. You can see there's quite a bit of space between the stars. That's M41. That's down in Sirius. Very difficult to see. Uh, you might be able to catch it at this time of the year, there are some other Messier objects up in this direction that are definitely not going to be visible at this time of the year. So these are going to be, you know, pretty tricky to find. I just want to make sure that I'm looking at the right kind of area here. Okay, so there's the sun and we are looking for M74. There we go, the Phantom Galaxy, M74. So this, a fantastic galaxy, beautiful face on, really almost like the Whirlpool galaxy, a grand design galaxy with very clear arms, but it's right there in front of the sun, so we're not actually going to be able to see it at this time of the year. And there are just a couple more over on the other side of the sun at this time of the year. Again, it'll be a little bit tricky to find. Oh, there we go, M77. That is indeed the next one I was looking for. So this is Cetus A. Now this is a galaxy with a halo around it. Uh, we did see a little bit of that in some other galaxies, but it's really visible here. This galaxy is quite distant, so we're seeing the center all kind of piled together, but it has this kind of outer ring of dust and other material around it. So a galaxy with a halo. And there is, uh, there should just be one more, a little further along in the sky. Uh, yeah, I know it's over in the direction of Orion. I'm looking for M79, which should be over in this direction. Uh, seeing as it is the last object, and because we are seeing this during the day and it's not quite going to be visible for us truly, there we go. There it is, just a little bit lower. Here's our last globular cluster and very, very dense in the center and fuzzier around the edges. So that should have, let me know if I missed any, but that should have brought the whole way through the Messier catalog, all 110 objects between last week's videos and this week's. So even though the Messier marathon is very, very difficult and at some times of the year it is technically impossible to see all 110, uh, I'm sure you saw over the past couple of videos that it is more than possible, even spread out over a couple of nights or a weekend, one weekend and another uh, weekend the next week, you can see the vast, vast majority of all of these different objects. So I hope you get a chance to see even a few of them over the coming days.